again from Spain, from AS, Kobe Es Eterno. Kobe is forever. As now we welcome in a man who can really put his worldwide impact into perspective, Bob Casas, the face for so long of the NBA on NBC, of the Olympics on NBC, and chronicling so much of Kobe's career, both here and on the international stage. And Bob, just seeing these headlines today, it doesn't even feel real. How can you put this tragedy into perspective? I don't know that any of us can put it fully in perspective because his life was writ large and it was a textured story. But beyond the tragedy, the human tragedy, not just of Kobe and Gianna, but the other seven people involved, you're talking about someone who, as you just mentioned, was a global icon. Those of us old enough to remember, to have seen, let's say, Wilt Chamberlain or Willie Mays, outside of Muhammad Ali during that period of time, that rough period of time, I can't think of an American athlete who was a genuinely global icon. But technology and the globalization of sports have changed that. So Michael Jordan, LeBron, and certainly Kobe were global international stars in a way that Jerry West or Oscar Robertson or Bill Russell or Will Chamberlain could not possibly have been. Right, basketball so uniquely suited to that too. And so much talk uh, that we've heard about the Mamba mentality, how that mentality evolved. But I think that you and I both remember vividly Kobe coming into the league at the time, the youngest player ever to start an NBA game and doing so with the Lakers, taking Magic Johnson's locker, all that that entailed. Can you just take us through that earlier time, how he was received, and then that very singular journey to eventually becoming a leader and a champion? I think, and you probably recall it the same way, Hannah, he was received with a good deal of skepticism. Is anybody good enough and ready by virtue of maturity and, and whatnot to play in the NBA at 18, let alone to be anointed almost immediately as the successor to Michael Jordan? Even then, rational people said there will never be another Michael Jordan, but this is the next big thing and there was some resentment toward him around the league and in the media and he himself was acutely aware of that but at the same time the first time I interviewed him was early in his rookie year and I was struck even then by how aware he was because of his upbringing the son of an NBA star and living in Italy and speaking multiple languages he was an uncommonly mature and worldly wise 18-year-old. Of course, he grew beyond that, but even then, you had to be struck by the fact that this was a different breed of cat. I was also struck by what you said, his legacy on the international stage, not only in terms of really being able to bond, and some of that was because he could speak multiple languages, being able to bond with international players in the NBA. I remember his true love for Pau Gasol and, and the times that they had together. But you hosted the Olympics for NBC. Kobe was on that 2008 team. He was on that 2012 Olympic team. What's his legacy on the Olympic stage? Well, double gold medals and also the restoration. There will never be anything to come close to the original Dream Team in 1992 and the impact that it had. But you recall that around 2000 and 2004, um, the American team was kind of in disrepute. The attitude toward it wasn't what people had come to hope. And in fact, in 2004, they were defeated. And then the notion became, with Mike Krzyzewski as the head coach, the notion became, we're going to do this the right way and we're only going to have players who are fully committed to what this means and Kobe was among them he wasn't the only one but he was among them and what was interesting to see was how well he was able to blend with teammates who had been his opponents and would again be his opponents because we know what a maniacal competitor he was and he said even at that time when I'm practicing with these guys I'm also making mental notes of what their strengths and weaknesses are so that I can better defeat them. 
Right, that was typical Kobe. That was definitely Kobe in a nutshell, a part of the Redeem team, as you mentioned. And he had dreamed really of one day going back to play in Italy where he lived from ages 6 to 13. He actually explored that, as you well remember, during the NBA lockout in 2011. But because of that upbringing, he was so different. He had this worldview, this appreciation and relationship for athletes, even in other sports. I mean, from swimming to tennis to soccer. Why was that cross-sports connection so powerful? Powerful. I think it had to do, as you said, Hannah, with his upbringing. He was a genuine soccer fan. He had relationships with soccer stars, some of whom expressed their condolences in the immediate aftermath. Uh, he was a, a big fan, a true fan of women's basketball, of the WNBA. He was coaching his own daughter, who tragically perished with him. Uh, he had a broad worldview. Uh, this was an intelligent guy. A complicated guy, sure, um, doesn't have to be venerated as a saint to appreciate his many admirable and outstanding qualities. He was a very interesting guy who was interested in the world around him beyond basketball. We just saw a Sabrina Inescu, one of those young athletes uh, whose lives that he impacted. I mean, not only on an international stage, not only the superstars, but I think the mentoring of the young people. His passion about his daughter, but also his passion for young athletes is something that we remember today. And, you know, it, it really, because it still seems so surreal and the loss is so fresh, and it, it really seems too early to even ask this question, but when one does consider his life and its impact, can you put his legacy into words? I think he was building a post-career and beyond basketball legacy that now will not be fulfilled. So there would have been more to assess in that regard were it not for this tragedy, but we could see the way it was headed, and it was headed toward a very positive and far-reaching legacy. But as a player, uh, he was certainly one of the all-time greats, but there's a difference between achievement and stardom. We could make a list, and I don't want to tick these names off because it seems like we'd be diminishing them. We can make a list of some players, some contemporaries, who are at least close to as good as Kobe in terms of achievement, but did not have the star power that he had. And of course, just like Derek Jeter with the Yankees, playing with the Lakers, not only in that market, but at a time when they were consistently good and there were championships or contending for championships in the years that they didn't win, that elevated all of it. But there's a difference between presence and stardom and mere athletic excellence. He had that whole package. Right, not just about the trophies, not just about the rings, but boy, did he count those. Five oh, in he, all. He, he absolutely did, and he was aware that Michael Jordan yep. had six. He sure and he was. was Acutely aware, even though, and this is a good thing, that he and Shaq reconciled mm -hmm. after their differences and the friction that drove them apart, uh, he was acutely aware that he had those championships outside the shadow of Shaquille O'Neal. He didn't like being 1A uh, to the mm -hmm. big guys number one, and he won the two championships and contended for others when he was the main guy. Yeah, one of, one of the great blessings of this, and I thought of Shaq immediately, and obviously he was devastated by the loss, was that they were able to come together after some really difficult times in their relationship, so thank God for that. Um, mm -hmm. Bob, always appreciate your perspective. Thanks so much for joining us on this Thanks, difficult Anna. day. And to head on Sports Center, what makes up the Mamba mentality? Kobe's career through the lens of scoring 81, coming back from a devastating injury, and winning five NBA titles are outside the lines on Sports Center today on the transformation of Kobe's image that makes him a beloved. And his daughter Gigi are gone, along with those seven others, including three teenagers. The impact of this tragedy is felt so deeply and on so many levels by those of us that knew him, but also so many others who have been inspired by him. Tom Rinaldi now on the life and the legacy of Kobe Bean Bryant. One name, Kobe. That's all we needed. Buckle up for Kobe! What did I just see? Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. From the time we first saw him as an ascendant star at Lower Marion High School outside Philadelphia, Kobe Bryant did more than shine. He captivated, and faster than that, he dominated. I have decided to skip college and take my talent to the NBA. 
picked 13th in the 1996 NBA draft by Charlotte. Kobe Bryant from Lower Marion High School in Pennsylvania. He was traded that same day to the Lakers. The Golden Jersey, baby. And Kobe Bryant making his first appearance. Bryant would become the youngest player ever to appear in an NBA game. Kobe Bryant, 18-year-old rookie. By his second season, an NBA All-Star. Playing with a flair, feel, and instinct that for many conjured Michael Jordan. That is so difficult. Some people can't dribble between their legs. By his fourth season in 2000, playing alongside Shaquille O'Neal, he was an NBA champion. Are we looking forward to coming back next year and defending our throne? Absolutely. The first of three consecutive titles for the Lakers. After O'Neal left Los Angeles, Bryant would become a leading light.